Need to know the summer starter and the fall starter. So that's what's coming up next. I think uh, we're getting close to the time of the Herald Blood is the starter. Conversation is beginning to fade. We're, we're a little tired of hearing about it because there's a couple guys, new guys that are coming on the block. You got Zay T set, the highest, the highest player according to 24 7 Sports that's committed to HBCU. Zay T set is a guy that's going to be entering the Southern. Another guy's going to be entering into Southern is Jalen Woods, three star quarterback out of Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be joining the Southern quarterback room. Coach Willie Totten, quarterback coach Willie Totten is going to have a very tough job trying to figure out who's going to be the guy, but he won't be short for options. Well, along with those young guys, you also got guys like Nick Bowden. That's out there going to be playing quarterback for him. Dylan Mohorta, transfer from UAB, is still there. So there are plenty of options, but sometimes too many options leave you with no options at all when it comes to quarterback. Now, Jackson State also has a pretty big battle. A lot of people thought that Jason Brown was the guy. After watching the spring game, I came on here and told you I didn't think he was the guy. Uh, if we're being honest, Sunshine, young Grayson Thompson showed out a little bit better than Jason Brown. And I think the Jackson State coaching staff actually saw that. They just go out and they grab another quarterback, Jacobin Morgan, three-star transfer out of Syracuse, tall quarterback, 6'6 quarterback. They just bring him in. This is almost a month removed from the spring game. This isn't one of those young quarterbacks you bring in to groom. This is a guy that you bring in to join the quarterback competition. I think there's a quarterback battle in Jackson State, and Jason Brown has not won it yet. So with Jackson State, uh, as I said, I talked to Kobe about it on his show uh, weeks before the spring game. I think Zy McDonald gives you one of the best chances to win the ball game, if we're being honest. He didn't play during the spring game, didn't play because of injury. And quite honestly, Zy McDonald, his elusiveness, gives you a shot at scoring every drive. That alone would entice me if I'm looking for a new quarterback. Now, uh, Morgan comes in. It's a pretty good look. He'll be a nice option for Jackson State. Not sure if they'll take the option, but he'll be a nice option for Jackson State. Maybe he'll be what they thought Phillip Short was going to be. They do have similar frames. So, next, we have UAPB. All right, they have a two-way QB battle. Nothing too exciting. It's UAPB. They calm down. Okay, this is Arkansas Pine Bluff. But at quarterback, they... Uh, they have a couple different guys, about three different quarterbacks. I'm told Makai Hagans right now is the guy. They have a freshman quarterback that's also pretty good. It's also battling for the spot. Alabama A&M, extremely, extremely big quarterback room. The quarterback room grows by the twos every two weeks, apparently. They're, this quarterback room is ridiculous. They, they did bring in a quarterback, Brian Plummer, right, a guy from the University of Buffalo. He switches over to safety for the spring game, but – they just keep bringing in more and more between Corey Chavez, Langford, Quincy Casey, ATJ. They just brought another recruit at quarterback. They are stacked. OK, and all these guys have a certain size and height measurements to them. If you notice, other than Langford, these guys are all at least six, three, all the way to six, six. Right. Tall, slender frames. They can also run the ball. Aside from Quincy Casey, they can all run the ball. Coach Kano Maynard has a certain type. Right. And he has a guy, prototypical quarterback in his mind that he thinks can run his offense. You can see that with his recruiting, the type of guys he's bringing in with these measurements. Now, who can be the guy is the biggest question for Alabama A&M. Because, as I was talking about before, their running game is on point. It's going to be about who's going to be the signal caller. Now, next up on this list, we got Mississippi Valley. Mississippi Valley has an interesting quarterback battle. Jelani Eason enters into the professional ranks. TJ Goodwin transfers and goes into transfer portal, has a couple offers from D2 HBCUs, which is pretty good. But this Mississippi Valley battle will be between quarterbacks that are new to the program. These quarterbacks are brand new to the program. The quarterback Jaden Sisk and Tajarian Williams will be battling it out throughout the summer and the fall. Not sure who's going to take the job, but it's a two-way battle right now. Now, Alabama State has a three-way battle, in my opinion. We'll see if it's actually even a battle at all. But Demetrius Davis cannot be your guy going into the fall. There has to be an open quarterback battle because you need him to be pushed. Apparently, nobody's pushing him. In the spring game, we didn't see him complete a pass. So, going into the summer, into the fall, you have Nikhil Let, a young guy, young quarterback. Might be a redshirt freshman at this point. I'm not even sure they even used a year of eligibility last year, sitting behind Demetrius Davis and Miles Crawley. 
So you really have some time to play with if you want a, a quarterback to build around. It might be Nikia Lett, being real. But to go with Nikia Lett, you also have Damon Stewart, transfer out of UAB, another option at quarterback. He just transferred about two weeks ago. This Alabama State team can't be sold at quarterback from what I've seen. Man, we have Gramlin. Gramlin has a very interesting quarterback battle that may already be done. It may be finished. If I had the choice today, I would choose Miles Crawley. Miles Crawley would be my starter at Gramlin today. And I'd run with it the rest of the season. He has the strongest arm. He's the vet. And between his body size and his ability to read the field going from deeper passes to shorter passes, really work through his progressions. I'm comfortable with that at my quarterback. I know what I have at running back with Floyd Chalk and Lamborghini Williams. I know what I got. I understand I have a new quarter, a new offensive court coordinator and a new playbook that's being installed. I need a quarterback that can run my offense the most efficiently. What's all, what's all these blackouts, man? Why do I keep blacking out? Sorry about that, you guys. I'm not sure what's going on right now, but it's a little couple blackouts. But anyway, with Grambling and Miles Crawley, you got Miles Crawley versus Julian Calvez. I really liked Julian Calvez last year. I think with another year of development, Julian Calvez can be a very good quarterback. He's developed very well on the ground. He's learned how to run the ball through last year, and I kind of, kind of got thrown to the fire last year. But now, even watching the spring game, just watching it over again, you can see how he's a little bit more decisive when determining when to run the ball. And that's good for a quarterback, especially a quarterback of that size, around 6'5". If he fills out a little bit more, being decisive and running the ball really puts a lot of pressure on defenses. So Julian Calvez is definitely a guy to watch out for, but I think Miles Crowley is going to be the guy at Grambling moving forward.